In body count, the world needs saving. You're an operative of the network, and the network has a noble primary directive, save the world. With violent war erupting in Africa, you're deployed by the network to solve this problem, because governments just can't seem to do the job right. It's a cool premise. In fact, there are a lot of cool things to do in body count, but this shooter isn't all just fun with a gun. When the dust settles and the bullet shells roll to a stop, it's easy to see that some things in body count just don't work the way they should. Body Count has spectacle, but it's not a pretty game. The environments have a granular quality, and maybe it's just me, but I'm pretty sure the entire campaign takes place in three different areas. You've got the gritty African battlefield, the hyper-polished future bunkers, and a third place I won't spoil for you. Even if things get old, it still looks right, and shredding through the environment with a crap storm of bullets gives you something fun to look at. The sound in Body Count is way better than the graphics, though. Your ears will be assaulted by some powerful gun effects, and the soundtrack is filled with suitable electronic beats and a strong bass to get the blood pumping. But don't expect anything out of the experience other than an adrenaline rush. Body Count is light on plot. And when I say light, I mean painfully light. You'll get very little character development and even less closure. There's a nugget of fun in Body Count. I can feel it. Ripping through a wall and nailing a headshot on an enemy soldier is the best kind of satisfying. And once you get used to the stiff aiming, you'll feel right at home behind the trigger. But there are just too many things that irked me when I fought my way across the world. The most obvious problem to point out besides the storytelling is the disconnect between how you play and how you're scored. With each kill you get that requires some skill, like getting a headshot or throwing a righteous grenade, your scoring multiplier on the top left of the screen goes up. If you keep up the chain, you're rewarded with a higher rank. The scoring system encouraged me to play like this. Careful, slow, and jonesing for headshots. But the visual feedback in Body Count encourages you to play like this. Wild, fast, and ready to rip the world apart. I felt like I wasn't allowed to enjoy the chaos. I got bad scores for playing rashly, and that can be really disappointing. Another thing that drove me nuts was the amount of sudden deaths in Body Count. I know that sometimes losing is all part of the game, but I seem to get hit by unseen grenades a little too often, or get killed before I could even orient myself on the field. All this might make Body Count sound like a lost cause, but it's not. There's some fun to be found in the amount of destruction on screen, the fast pace of combat, and the raw gunplay. The multiplayer also runs well and features the usual range of deathmatch options and some horde-based co-op. But in the age of the awesome first-person shooter, even the slightest issue can tarnish the experience. If you do anything for a firefight, even if that firefight comes with a dumb story and some janky deaths, then Body Count might deliver the adrenaline rush you so desperately crave. But if you can get all the explosive action of global conflict somewhere else, without the issues, well, that just seems like a better deal. For more on Body Count, check out IGN.com.